yeah, life's, life's very different from when it was nine years ago, really. I'm Emma Heathcote-James, and this is my dog and business partner, Henry. There's been so many ups and downs along the way, and I think one thing that gets you out of bed on the, on the difficult mornings is to have a role model. Role models are really aspirational, inspirational and important. When I first moved down to the Cotswolds from Birmingham, um, very quickly I met a man called John and very quickly became my absolute best friend. He was always smiling. We just stuck together, we did everything together. Everyone thought we were an item, we absolutely weren't. But he had a dog called Billy and um, I had my black lab and the two dogs very quickly became best friends, which is always helpful. So John was a carpenter and he worked at the Royal Shakespeare Company. He loved making things and when I first set up Little Soap Company, he obviously made the first moulds, helped me make contraptions to cut the soap. He even helped me kit out the workshop. He was quite poorly at the time, but he sort of sat in a deck chair and told me where to drill and where to hit things. So um, yeah, he's been a very big part of, of, of the business. And when he did get really, really poorly, it gave us something else to think about. And it really was meant to be a distraction. And um, because I can't do things by halves, it had suddenly turned into this business. Um, and we'd go and have tea and cake and I'd deliver soap to them, I don't know, say 30 quids worth. And we'd probably spend 25 in the farm shop having tea and cake. It was bonkers. And when he died, it was like, what do I do? Do I, do I just knock it on the head or, or do I carry on? And it was one of those real moments of actually, this has really got legs. So kind of in John's name, I sort of made a little pact to myself and thought it's an experiment. If it doesn't go right, that's fine, but let's see what can happen. So we've had so many opportunities, so many award ceremonies. I'd have absolutely had him as my plus one there. He would have loved it. I think he would be so proud, yeah. Even now, we've still got some of his old moulds in the workshop. Can't quite bear to throw it away, but you can see through the greaseproof paper, it was all starting to wear. So it's um, it's a bit manky and it's a little bit falling apart, but um, that'll always stay in the cupboard here. So yeah, there's there's a lot of John that lives on here, definitely. I learned a lot from him that you don't have to have a regular job, you don't have to work nine to five, you know, you can do things differently. I think one, one thing John definitely taught me was people do business with people. So it's time to let this set now. Henry? Henry Walkies! Come on then, just go Walkies. Come on then. John was one of those people that wouldn't mind having the odd treat and he was really good, me being a girl going, oh god that's naughty, that's cake, he'd be like, oh live in the moment, just enjoy it. He touched people's lives without doing anything, just from being a nice person. I, I do look back and think my life would be so different had I, had I, had I not had him in my life and not met him. And even him getting cancer, it was the worst news possible sat in that doctor's surgery. But even then, he said, that's our next adventure. One thing my gran always used to say was the best gift you can give somebody is your time. And John gave his time so freely. He gave me so much time. And when he got that diagnosis, that, that was the one thing I had to give him back. That there's a massive part of John that lives on through me. And I think really there's a massive part of him that lives on through the business. I probably never got rid of him in here. He'd have been here the whole time. But um, no, I think he'd, he'd have loved it. And I'd have loved him being around too, really.